Hi everyone, my name is Julie. This is Keep Calm with Books and Coffee. And today I'm gonna to be talking about two books that I left off of my best books of 2022 because they were HarperCollins titles. And I didn't wanna talk about HarperCollins books any more than I had to at the end of last year. And I was honestly a little confused about what we were supposed to be doing as far as if we were supposed to talk about them or not. So I left them off and now you get to, I get to talk about two books that I really loved last year and would have made it onto my top books of 2022 if not for the HarperCollins strike. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is The Darkness Outside of Spit, Elliot Schrafer. This was a sci-fi that took place in a somewhat distant future where there's a space race of sorts going on. Um, the powers that be have realized that moon colonization is possible, so they've sent a, um, a researcher off to colonize the moon, but soon after she lands, her signals go dark and they don't hear from her. Flash forward about a year and they hear a distress signal from her and they send her brother off into space to try and rescue her as well as um, what we figure out rather quickly is there is someone from basically it's like US versus Russia essentially um, and there is like a Russian astronaut as well. So the two of them have to go to try and rescue Ambrose's sister um, from this fate on the moon. There's a lot more that happens than that. That is only the beginning of this story, but I absolutely loved it to pieces. I actually um, posted a review of this book last year and talked about it in its entirety. And I just, I loved this so much. It shocked the crap out of me. Um, and I just was so um, taken aback by it. Like I, I didn't see any of the twists and turns coming. I didn't see anything uh I didn't predict anything well personally I just was expecting this to be sort of a straightforward story and I got way more than I bargained for so I went in blind I highly recommend that I wouldn't go in you know reading too much about this book before you go but I just I loved it I loved the the, the space feels of it I loved the sort of um, how it was as much about the characters as it about was about like the plot like the plot's important it's there it's definitely a substantial plot but we're mostly talking about the characters and I mostly got um, how we were doing commentary about earth and about our lives and about our timeline within this futuristic timeline as well which is always a really interesting part of sci-fi for me so I absolutely loved this book and was really sad to leave it off my 2022 favorites. The other one I have is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. This is another one that I actually created a review for last year and that will be going live again because I posted it during Vlogmas and that was actually during the HarperCollins strike and then I realized this was a HarperCollins title so I put it on private so that will be going live again. But in this we are following a few different timelines all centered around the Brook Haunt School for Girls. Uh, we are following uh, a timeline where the school is open and there has recently been a death of two of the students due to um, them getting stuck in a like a grove where the bees killed them and kind of the immediate aftermath we're following that timeline as well as a timeline in the present day and sort of just melding those together in really interesting ways and even though those are our two main timelines we're also jumping around in time with all of our characters which is just a really interesting perspective we're, we're mainly focused on the Brook Haunt school and kind of how this school has um, become famous because of a book and how that book is being made into a movie and that's kind of the main premise but overall we're just kind of exploring if Brook Haunt is haunted and what is going on here uh, this was such an interesting book it's sapphic it's so um, it, like I said, it plays with time and it plays with our characters, emotions and perceptions. We don't really know who's a reliable character and who isn't. Uh, it's, it's really complex and I would highly recommend the audiobook. This was a definitely, it's a chunky book and it definitely took some time for me to get into and kind of realize what was going on and to try and really sink my teeth into it. But overall, I just loved this. I loved the atmosphere. I loved the way the story was told. There's some really interesting illustrations in here as well. And I will have my 
full review linked down below. But I just felt like it wasn't fair to not give these two some more airtime because I just loved them so much last year. And I actually read The Darkness Outside Us twice in August because I just had to read it all over again. And I will definitely be rereading this at some point because I want to pick up on all the, the intricacies and kind of understand it even more. But I just wanted to put it all out there and say how much I loved these because last year they, like I said, they didn't get the airtime because of the strike and I did love them to absolute bits. So uh, if you want to chat about either one of those down below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see me again, go ahead and hit that subscription button down below and I will see you next time. Bye!